Hello, good evening, and welcome back. This evening, we are going through the Army's leaflet from 2017 that has resurfaced recently through Reddit of how to spot extreme right wingers. Look out for individuals who. These are the indicators and warnings, and of course, this is close to my heart considering I am joining the UK Army Reserves very shortly. Because I still do like my country, I think there are things worth fighting for, and I would call myself a proud patriot. However, the first one is, people look, look out for individuals who describe themselves as patriots. This harkens back to the Second World War, of course, with Winston Churchill, who said that a good soldier does not fight because of what is in front of him, but because of, the, of what is behind him. Which is to say that you fight for your country and not because of your enemy. You don't go to war because you want to kill people or for hatred of others, but for respect and love for the people behind you. Which is what a patriot is. Um... I know there has been a lot of negative attention towards nationalists and even people who make those generalizations and say, well, nationalism is bad. They say, well, we shouldn't conflate that with patriotism because patriotism is still good. And yet the Ministry of Defense, the MOD, um, who issued this within the army, say that people who describe themselves as patriots are indicators and warnings of an extreme right winger. Other ones we have are looking at opponents as traitors, refer to individuals ready to challenge their extreme right-wing views as being indoctrinated. Well, again, it, it comes to how people form those views, that if they go straight through uh, state-sponsored education and come up with their views without challenging it, then that is fair enough to be called indoctrinization, because that is what it is by definition. People who are taught things, taught what to think and not how to think, uh, especially not critically, and just go through life with their unchallenged views, that is the definition of indoctrination. So when you say, uh, ready to challenge their extreme working views, one of the issues here and with the entire leaflet is of course how you, were, how you are to define extreme right wing. That if you were to say, well hey, I'm correct, you're wrong, therefore <laughs> any opposition you put up for me to censor you, destroy you, deplatform you, any of those things, is you being a fascist instead of <laughs> me being a fascist for deplatforming you, then you're bad because I know that you're bad and that isn't up for questioning. So <laughs> you shouldn't challenge what I say, no, because you're indoctrinated. Wait, the hypocrisy. No, don't mention that or you're a bad man or a or, or woman. But <laughs> let's face it, that ain't going to happen, is it? Uh, refer to political quickness as some left wing or communist plot. Well, okay, if we look at the origins of political correctness, it does come out of the late 19th century with Marxism and uh, Lenin and Trotsky. The idea being to say, well, hey, our politics are correct. Uh, this is the etymology of political correctness. If you just look at the, the breakdown of the words, it means the correct politics. And to say, well, because ours are correct, we shouldn't allow discussion of the incorrect politics. Uh, and therefore, we should censor the platform and all that good stuff. So when you say it's a left-wing communist plot... It did originate as a communist plot. You might say, well, there isn't that anymore, but you can understand why people would think that, considering that's its origins, and it hasn't really changed. So, use blatantly untruthful or incorrect references to immigrants, Judaism, or Islam. I, I, I like how they throw Judaism here just to say, hey, well, Hitler was anti-Semitic, and he was extreme right-wing, wasn't he? Yes, because <laughs> increased taxes, public spending, gun registry... Um, a comprehensive educational system, healthcare and retirement funds, that's all right-wing and not left-wing socialism, considering he said he was the National Socialist Workers' Party and Labour left-wingers are for the working class, so he was right-wing. Hmm. Anyway, they just throw in uh, saying it's anti-Jew in order to try and make it seem more legitimately right-wing. It's like in America they have, uh, I can't remember the name of the prison now, but it's very high security, maximum security, essentially. And they have political prisoners in there, but they throw in some Islamists in order to balance it out. That they're just just for the quotas, essentially. It's what they're doing here for uh, Judaism, from what I can see. And when they say blatantly untruthful or incorrect references, they might say, hey, most terrorism is from uh, Muslims. And they say, oh, that can't be right. But if you saw one of my videos yesterday, then you'll see, well, actually, that, that is correct with about 80% of it being from Muslims. Sure, it's against Muslims, but it's still true that it's from Muslims. But they could say, that's blatantly untruthful, hmm, because of how they wish to interpret it and say, well, no, because in the UK, most of it's from extreme right-wingers. Oh, well, how do you define that? Oh, well, if people do it on a race, then it's right-wing. 
And if they don't, then it's left winger or Islam. So, okay, right. So, black supremacists are right wingers. Yes. Black Lives Matter is a right wing. And Malcolm X was a right winger. Yes. And Islam, which is really conservative, is, is right wing. Hang on. Damn. <laughs> More cognitive dissonance and logical fallacies. Shit. <laughs> We've been called out yet again. Right. So, add Istan to British place names. Well, if I'm a proud Kekistani, does that mean I can't join? Hmm. Hmm. Um, use the term Islamofascism. Uh, well, <laughs> if, if you look at the propaganda that's being pushed out by the Islamic community, they're saying that d divided we are weak, but together we stand. And if you look at um, the origins of fashion more than just the sign, which is a bundle of sticks, because that's what it means. It's like a faggot in English is a bundle of sticks. It is to say that individually we break and, and together we are strong. In fact, that's the origins of Bulgaria as well, as it happens. But anyway, that, that's the term. So to say, yes, together we are strong and divided we are weak, that is fascism. But you can't say Islamofascism, because if you join two things that are correct, that's now wrong. Uh, make generalizations about Muslims and Jews. Right, but the issue is here, again, and, okay, you're, I, I'm going to ignore the fact that you're including Jews, because you don't really mean it. You're just doing that so you don't look like you're really pro-Islam, even though you made a poster last year, and one of them... Uh, and the total cost was 1.8 million pounds to say, oh yes, we're fighting a war, but hey, you want to pray five times a day? Let's just tell everybody to stop the fighting so we can stop out in the open and, and let you pray again. That's great, isn't it? Hmm, yes. And of course, later on, they've, they've done the same thing with, oh yes, we're, we're taking on the snowflakes as well. And even though the Scottish guardsman who was there tried to sue the army for saying, hey, I, I didn't want you to use my photo and now everybody's mocking me. What the hell, guys? Why, why are you calling me a snowflake? Which is, of course... Uh, well, at least it's reminiscent of the story of the, um, the the story about saying all hipsters look the same and they used a photo and a guy said hey I didn't give you permission to use my photo that's not allowed and they said well this isn't your photo but you're proving our point to say all hipsters look the same if you thought you were this guy because you look the same as him <laughs> great but yeah making generalization about Muslim Jews the point is conflating Muslims and Islam which is of course what Jacob Rees Mogg has done a little while ago to say oh we can't criticize Islam you mean Muslims not Islam so that's the issue we have here. And of course, the, the problem with these things is that you, you're telling people who are apolitical like in the army, they really don't care, they just want to get the job done, to say, okay, cool, well, here are these, these guidelines which are really unclear and ambiguous, but if you make a mistake, then you'll be held accountable, which basically means you've got to be overly sensitive and really careful and prosecute people when they shouldn't be prosecuted, otherwise we're going to call you out as well. So these people who don't care and just want to get their job done now have to either look into great detail about what these things mean, or just go with what they hear, and that conflates Muslims and Islam, which is a big issue across all these platforms as well. Same thing with saying if it's feminism or females. Oh no, and oh, what's a joke and what's real? What's hate speech, hate speech what's free speech? Uh, same issue. Anyway, next one. Make inaccurate generalizations about the left or government. Well, in that case, it depends how you were to define the left or government. And it seems like you don't want anybody popping any black pills there, do you? Hmm. So, talk of an impending racial conflict or race war. Okay, um, again, I think that's just conflating cultures and multiculturalism instead of multiracialism. So, I, I saw a video footage recently of a an ethnic Pakistani in England saying, like, 20 years ago, England was more English, but now there are more um, Pakistani guys here. So, in 20 years, this is going to be like, Pakistan isn't that good. Well, surely then that's increasing <laughs> the chance of a race war, which is really just conflict because, um, sorry, it's cultural conflict because there are different cultures. And that is increasing, especially when you have uh, media pushing it, that individual people are going to think, well, what the hell? Why am I being persecuted for being white and English? I'm not accepting this. I'm going to push back. And that's the British spirit anyway. I mean, if, if you look at um, Europe at the beginning of the Second World War with, when Blitzkrieg was going through, Britain was, was on its own and... <laughs> it, things were looking very bleak, but it is the British spirit, and I am a, a proud Brit to know that we will power on. And again, as Winston Churchill said, that if you're going through hell, keep going. And I know John McDonald said, oh, he's the, the real villain of World War II. Well, fuck off, mate. If you don't like England, then leave. <laughs> go to Somalia, go to Pakistan. I'm sure they'll welcome you gladly. Oh, but you're not going there, because you know that England's better, so shut up. Um, describe multicultural towns as lost. Um, well, if you're talking about no-go zones in particular, 
then I, I understand why, because you're not allowed to push back. Or again, if you're saying, well, <laughs> we can't talk about those things, otherwise we'll be called as racist. We can't even prosecute <laughs> grooming gangs, otherwise we'll be called racist. Then you can understand why people might think of them as lost. Uh, discuss the creation of white-only communities. Well, yeah, that's just a, a pushback on quotas to say, well, if you're going to accept black, Asian, minority, ethnic communities, then how about we create some white only as well? Instead of saying equality for all and equal opportunity, we're going to say, well, if you insist on segregation, then we're going to make the most of it. So yeah, I, I disagree with that entirely, but it's basically making the best of what you've got. Um, claim that immigration is the root of injustices against vulnerable people, e.g. old age, pensioners, veterans. Well, this comes from Milton Friedman, doesn't it? To say you can either have a national health service or open borders, but you can't have both. Because at the moment we've got 300,000 new people a year coming in. And sure, eventually they might be creating, um, well, building to the economy in order to pay to the uh, socialist services. But until then, they're just a drain on it. And if you keep importing this many people to such a small country, then that isn't going to be sustainable because you're going to have a bigger drain than support. And then, and <laughs> of course, we got, was it 80% Bangladeshi Muslims? Was it Bangladesh, Pakistan? I think Bangladesh, who are unemployed and claiming benefits. Then, of course, there's a big problem because <laughs> you haven't got enough people paying for the people not working and claiming benefits. Because, again, as I've mentioned before, if you were to uh, quit work and try to claim benefits, you've got to wait half a year, unless it's for religious concerns, which could be working with someone of the opposite gender, handling pork, selling alcohol, that kind of thing. In which case, you don't need to wait that long and you can get on claiming benefits straight away. Uh, threat and violence when losing an argument. Although claiming that extreme white wing groups protest peacefully. I'll look at the guy that last bit. Others you could say, well, that's Antifa, isn't it? And they're communist sympathizers, left wingers. So, oh no. Although claiming that extreme white wing uh, groups protest peacefully. Okay, sure. I'm, I'm not for threatening violence at all. That's fine. Yeah. Good. Well done. That doesn't show your extreme white wing, though. But okay. <laughs> I, sure, you, you shouldn't put, put those sorts of people into, uh, into the army. Okay, but they're not extreme white wingers. Uh, claim that it is acceptable to abuse Jews or Muslims as Judaism or Islam are not racist. I think this is another thing of not understanding the argument, which is to say we're not abusing, but we are critiquing and criticizing Judaism or Islam. I, I don't really wish to include Judaism here, but we're, we're criticizing these ideologies because they're not racists. They're, they're not racist. So we're not abusing them, but we're criticizing them. But I understand that just criticizing them, which is maybe saying something they don't like, is then hate speech, which is then verbal abuse. Uh, so you're conflating these things just to make a big hoo-ha out of nothing. Next, have tattoos with overt and covert extreme right-wing iconography. Uh, sure, but I presume that also includes uh, Pepe and Keck, considering, uh, what was it, um, Overwatch, where the Keck costume was um, <laughs> banned because it, it seemed to be um, <laughs> extreme right-wing and... Uh, reminiscent of the, the Third Reich. It's not, it's the Kekistan flag. How dare you? <laughs> um, and I'm an ethnic Kekistani. Um, next, become increasingly angry at perceived injustices or threats, the so-called national identity. Well, if that's to say one rule for one and another rule for another, then surely you understand that you want equality for everyone under the law. Everybody should be equal under the law. Whether you're poor, rich, you've got nothing, you've got everything, you're... Um, working in the private sector, social sector, you're a politician, you're an employee, employee, whatever it is, it's one law for all. So when you say national identity, that is to say, well, if we've got quotas for these particular cultures and ethnicities and uh, people from these countries, um, immigrants, I mean, you could call them refugees, but I, I don't believe in um, economic <laughs> refugees. Again, they're, they're just migrants. Then you can understand why it's injustice or threats to so-called national identity. Same thing happened, of course, when I mentioned that story of the 25-year-old straight white male who wasn't hired by Cheshire police for being a straight white male, and eventually was, and they had a settlement out of court because it was discriminatory, and it is against the law. So that is probably why these things exist. Next, involve colleagues in closed social media groups. Right, so you've got to include everybody in everything, and you're not allowed to <laughs> say, hey, you probably won't appreciate this because it's things you won't like. So, oh no, because everybody's got to be involved. And if you if you don't like something that somebody else is, is posting, then you're racist or misogynistic or an Islamophobe or something like that. So we have protected ideas and you're not allowed to 
discuss these ideas that we don't like because we're against fascists, so we're going to decide what can be said and silence other speech because that's not fascist at all. Oh, oh no, we're hypocrites again. Okay. <laughs> if only we could get through one of these rows without being hypocrites. Uh, and then actively seek out impressionable individuals to indoctrinate or recruit. Right. So if you're saying, hey, I, I noticed that you're having a hard time and you're being told things by a feminist society, essentially, and being persecuted for your unalienable characteristics, that you're straight, you're white, and, and you're the man, well, maybe there's another way around this, and you shouldn't feel terrible because of who you are and things you can't change. Maybe there's another way, and you can still become a, a strong, independent, confident person by, ca by capitalising on your characteristics. And you shouldn't, you shouldn't be terrible and <laughs> depressed and suicidal. But no, because now you're indoctrinating them by making them not feel suicidal. Great work. Finally, have extreme... <laughs> okay, have extreme, extreme... Good job, guys. Right-wing group stickers or badges on clothing and personal items. Which goes back to overt and covert extreme right-wing iconography, as you can see on the bottom left. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's the same thing. But, again, what are you going to include? Are you going to say, oh, make America great again isn't allowed, as we've had the uproar in America with the Navy having things like make the navy great again and having similar icons and, and symbols sewn in, which is completely legal and the, <laughs> the navy allows it, with, with reference to Donald Trump. But, oh no, that's going to be extreme right wing as well, because a red cap is basically a Ku Klux Klan hat, isn't it? <laughs> of course, yes. And again, um, Pepe and, and Keck, I'm going to include those, that it really depends what you define as extreme right wing and why, but you also know that you can't push back about against these things, because... <laughs> Otherwise, you're <laughs> discussing things that you shouldn't discuss and, <laughs> and making claims that you shouldn't because now you're, you're, you're pushing back against what's set in stone and what is definitely the truth and should never be questioned with because we're anti-fascist. So we're going to censor opposing arguments because that's what anti-fascists do and not what fascists do. Oh, we're hypocrites again. Anyway, that's it for me. And you can see I'm particularly annoyed about this because I love the army. I think the army is great, we should be proud of our country, and a strong military is a requirement for that, and I thank every veteran, everyone who's in our armed services, and I, I look forward to, to joining you guys, even if only as a reserve, to begin with, we'll see where that takes me, but thank you very much for defending our country and a way of life, and I sincerely hope that there is still something worth fighting for, and we can rebuild this once great nation into a new great Britain. But until next time, guys, like, comment, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. It really helps it out in the YouTube algorithm. Um, help this channel grow, because we all know that's what this needs. New videos every single day, at least one a day, and I will see you next time. Have a good evening, have a good weekend, and I'll see you next time.